today. He, um, he titled it The Heart for Vision in the Service of the Kingdom. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Um, it's very important for us to have the heart for the vision. Having the vision is not enough. Amen. Amen. And how can you develop the heart to understand the vision? How can you develop the heart to key into the vision? And how can you own the vision? Amen. Amen. And there are certain things that I wanted to point out to us first to look into. And um, for us to have the heart, we're going to look at the Bible. What does the Bible say in Romans chapter 10, verse 10? If you find it, please read. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Verse 10, yes. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, mm -hmm. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. God bless you. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that, for with the heart, so it all starts from the heart. Amen. Amen. The mission starts from the heart. The whole thing starts from the heart. We believe unto righteousness. What is righteousness? Doing the right thing. Amen. Let's, let's just not be too spiritual now. Doing the right thing. But it comes from your heart. You cannot, you know, there's something they call premeditation. Before a sin is committed, it's been thought about, we've thought about it, we've actually committed that in our hearts. And that's why Jesus talked about when you look at a woman, you know, you've committed the adultery even before, before touching her because you've already had sex with her, even before touching her. Amen. Amen. And so that is how it is with this vision. Amen. We have to actually have it in our hearts. Actually, we, we have to succeed inside first before it can manifest. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So that means for everything we say is actually an outburst from what is inside our heart. How can we understand this vision? But, you know, before we go into that, I'd like you to know that what is this vision we're talking about? What is the vision we're talking about? There's just only one vision that every Christian in this world is pursuing. is the vision of Jesus, the passion of the cross. What is the passion? What was? What did Jesus die for? It's for souls. Soul winning. That's the vision. Amen. Amen. And we're all given this mandate. Hallelujah. Amen. And this vision is being given to our leaders and they're running with it. And we have to own it. We have to be part of it. Amen. Amen. So I'm looking at this vision. If you understand that the vision is so winning, how can we key into winning souls as workers in the vineyard of God, as ministers, as evangelists, as you know, whatever denomination or whatever category of ministry the Lord has put you in inside the church. How can you, you know, sometimes we think that, you know, oh, I'm present. Some people are just present. As workers, they join the workers department. They're just present, but they're not available. There's a difference between being present, but you're not available. You show attendance, you come here, but you're not available. Availability of a person, it means like when, when, you, when, you, when you're available, you're available inside out. Everything, it's not just your physical presence coming. Like your inside is present. Everything, <coughs> you're willing to pour out. Amen. 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 So a lot of us, you have to ask yourself, am I just present and I'm not yet available? So for us to have the heart for the vision in the service of the kingdom, we just have to go beyond being present to being available. These are stages we have to go through. So the fact that you signed up to be a worker in a department does not mean that you're available. When I'm talking about availability, I'm not just talking about coming to Bible study or coming for the meeting. It's coming with you inside out. Coming fully. Wow. Bring it on. Wow. Let the real Jemima be present. Let my spirit be felt, both in heaven and on earth, that I came, that I'm a part of this vision, Amazing Grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, let, let me also let you know that being available is not enough. Mm -hmm. These are stages we have to grow to. Mm -hmm. If they're all stages. Being available is not enough. And it's important for us to know that some people are available, but they are not usable. Mm -hmm. You can be available, but you're not usable. Now, remember we started with being present. And then you made yourself available. But you're not usable. Why are you not usable? Why? Maybe because you're, and you say that you're different? Why? These are questions we have to ask ourselves. Why are you not usable? Now, to break it down further, there are some things that we have in our house that are just there for decoration. 
We can't use them. There are categories of people that we group that we know that this one will contaminate the group. Let them just be there to make up the number. They show up. Yes. They show for every meeting we have, they're always there, but we can't use them because this one will spoil the whole thing. Are you in that category of people that are there, but they are not usable? Even the heavens cannot use you because you are trouble where you are already. You are available. What's your trouble? The heads of departments, they're afraid of you. Just be in that meeting. But you're not <laughs> usable. Hallelujah. I'm just going to rush through, but Pastor is counting my time, I know. But we have to be usable. Hallelujah. But guess what? Let me blow your mind. It's not enough to be usable. You don't stop there being usable. You can be usable, but no wired for results. Wired. You can be usable, but you're not wired for results. You're in that department, you're working, you're doing these things for them, but you're not productive. There is no result to see, no visible results recorded in heaven. You're present. You are available, you are usable, but you're not wired yet for results. You're not productive yet. How can you be productive? How? How can you make yourself be productive? How can you be wired to produce something and not just be usable? You're just, God is using you, yes. But what, what is it? What are you producing? There are some things that we know that this one is a multiplier. There are some people that we need in our midst that we know that this one is a multiplier. This one is an evangelist. This one will bring people. This one will raise sons and daughters. This one will raise the youth. This one will impact. But you are there, present, available, usable, but not yet there, not yet wired to create a legacy. When we're talking about producing results, we're talking about being being able to create a legacy. Hallelujah. Amen. This is very, very important. It's very important for us not just to be available or usable, but to be wired for results. Amen. Amen. Now, for us to grow into this being wired for results, there are three that certain steps that I listed here. And I'd like to share the steps with you. Step one is believing. In the vision, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in the vision of amazing grace? Yeah. You cannot run with a vision you don't understand. You cannot run with a vision you don't believe in. You are wasting not just your time, the time of the generations, your children to come, because you would have been more productive and laid a better foundation for them to ride on a greater part that God will back them up even when you're not there. Do you believe in the vision of soul winning that this church is talking about? Now, the reason why we all have struggles as ministers, as workers, is when we don't believe in the vision. We have to believe. Listen, now, let's graduate. Now, believing in the vision, there's a difference between belief and faith. Faith is the higher level of belief. So when you believe that, listen, when you believe you, you know, when you believe, you know that this can happen. But when you have faith, it's beyond every reasonable doubt. Even when they kill you, you know and you know that even when you're dead, this must happen. Hallelujah. Faith lives beyond the natural. It operates in the supernatural. So we have to graduate from believing into having faith in the vision that though it might tarry, it must definitely come to pass. Either in my time, in the time of my children, this must happen. And I am glad that I am in the foundation of this vision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? So we must have faith in this vision. Even though it's looking like it's not possible right now. Now remember what the vision is. Sometimes we don't remember. We don't. We forget what the vision is. We think the vision. Be 
passionate because it's not about them. It's not about the pastors. It's all about God. Hallelujah. It's all about soul winning. This faith in the vision I'm talking about is, listen, faith is a life. Faith is not just a word. It's a life. When faith, this morning, you know, when I was studying the Bible early this morning, God said to me, I said, God, talk about faith to me. He said, listen, faith is a life. It's a life itself. That's what we don't understand. That even Jesus practiced faith. He believed in his father. His father would not abandon him when he was a human flesh. He had faith. Abraham was a father of faith. Faith is a life when faith arises. Results spring forth. Amen, 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 amen. amen. So tonight, I want you to wake up your faith in the vision. Connect. Connecting to the vision is not enough. You need to own the vision. When people are running race and they pass the burden, whoever is carrying on is not carrying on because of the person that gave them or started the race. They are carrying on because they must. They must continue. Because their glory is dependent on keeping that track running. So your blessings and your success is getting to this vision. This is you here. Not you in Philly, not you in California, not you in Texas. 